Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have got my trusty gift card here and I am ready to do another mixed media collage piece with you guys. So today you are going to get to see what actually goes on in the mind of an intuitive artist. This thing is going to change a million times. I have no idea what I'm doing at any one point, so you'll see. I put all kinds of stuff down and then I end up covering it up with different paint and different papers. But that's all part of the process, and it's kind of why I love doing it. So first of all, I'm using another 8-inch um, by 8-inch cradled wooden board that I got off of Amazon. And I just went ahead and gessoed that to prepare it to receive all of the acrylic. And here I'm using some of my handmade um, collage papers, which if you've seen my other videos, I have a couple of videos making those, and I will probably have more of those in the future too, because they're just a lot of fun to make, and I like watching other people make gel prints, so I'm thinking that other people do too. So what I'm using as an adhesive here is the matte gel medium that I am so fond of, and I'm actually running out of it in this video, so I hope I make it all the way through before I have to go and pick up some more. These are all just different prints that I have done on different kinds of paper. Um, the black and white ones are done on different kinds of tissue paper. I have regular tissue paper. I also have the wet strength. And I bought the wet strength because I've seen a lot of other artists use it. And I thought, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's going to be a lot stronger because the tissue tends to tear because it's so thin. But honestly, I really... It is stronger, I'll give you that for sure. I think though that if you're careful pulling your prints, most of the time you're not going to have any issue with tearing them, at least for me. So for the cost, I'm going to just go and get the stuff that I can either get at Walmart or the dollar store for pennies versus the wet strength, which is often out of stock on Amazon and I don't really know of anywhere else around here that you can buy it. And it's also quite pricey, so my advice would be at least give the regular tissue paper a shot because more likely than not, everyone already has it in the house, and if not, it's super cheap. But anyway, the black and white ones were done on the two types of tissue paper. The colored prints that I'm using there, I actually did those on just regular copy paper. I was just testing out a few things and just playing with some different patterns. Didn't really know if I would end up using them for anything or not. So they kind of spoke to me today and I thought I'm going to go ahead and grab them and just see what happens. So here I am just gluing down different pieces of whatever I've got with my matte medium there. And I'm going to get a nice base going on this. And what I end up doing here is getting the whole thing covered up and deciding that it was really boring and kind of bland and depressing looking, so it needed a giant pop of color. But you'll see that in the next segment. While I'm thinking of it here, I've kind of gotten away from putting music in the videos, and I think sometimes it adds something and sometimes it doesn't, and it's just definitely a lot easier from an editing standpoint. But what do you think? Um, let me know in the comments if you guys like music, don't like music. Like I said, sometimes I think it has a place. I hate having just large chunks of silence, but at the same time, I don't know, it can kind of be distracting from what's going on, and I've had a few comments going towards that route, but just let me know what you think, because I'm making these videos for you guys, so you should be the ones who get to have some input on what goes into them. You can kind of already see here that it, the color scheme that I chose is just kind of drab and, I don't know, just not very exciting to me. So I keep trying to pull a little more color in with these dark greenish teal pieces, and I do like them, but at the end of the day, it kind of all just ends up getting covered over anyway because I feel like it needs a pop of bright color and maybe a little bit of warmth added to it. 
So here I am going in with a little bit of India ink. This is just regular black India ink, and I'm using a bamboo skewer to apply it to the canvas. I was trying to mimic the shapes of, um, like the rectangle shapes that I have in the print there. And also most of my cutouts are rectangles and squares as far as the actual collage pieces go. So I was trying to kind of make a little continuity using those. So once that dried, I'm just going along with an X-Acto knife and trimming up the edges of the piece. And I definitely needed to change the blade in that, so please don't be like me. Put a fresh blade in your X-Acto knife when you go to cut things because then you won't have messy edges and everything will come out a little bit nicer. Incidentally, this little cutting board is one of the first art supplies that I ordered off of Timu, and I do have to say that I use it probably more than anything else. It's really helpful. So once all the trimming was done, I could kind of really see what I was working with. And sometimes I like to go ahead and either trim the paper or then sometimes I will even paint the sides black because it helps me be able to visualize the piece more as a finished whole than as just a work in progress because sometimes it's just really hard to see what you're doing that way. But I went in with a little bit more of the India ink and then I decided that I wanted to throw the brightest color that I have and if you've watched my other videos you know that I absolutely love this fluorescent pink. God knows why because I am not a pink person at all in any other area of my life. I do not wear pink clothing and bright colors are really not my thing but for some reason lately in my art have to have the pink. It has to be as bright as possible. So to go along with that I'm throwing in a little bit of cadmium red and kind of blending them together and I do like the direction that it's taking but you can see I'm kind of covering everything up already. On the bottom there you can still see some of the design of the uh, gel prints that I had coming through because of I'm keeping the colors pretty translucent for that reason. And um, I've mentioned this in other videos, but if you have a color that is a little bit more opaque and you mix it with some of the matte medium, you can make it a little more translucent. It's a really good trick to use the medium for. That way you can kind of get whatever color you want in the opacity that you want. Now I'm just going in with a little bit of yellow ochre and it's warming things up a little bit because where I have it laying over top of the pink and the red, it's creating a little bit of like a warm orange color, which I like. And then I'm just doing some random mark making with the edge of my tool there, which is the gift card, just to get a few more lines to kind of mimic the lines from the India ink that I put in. And then I'm actually going back into the wet paint with my bamboo skewer and using it as a mark making tool in and of itself to like kind of carve and make a little bit of texture. Everything was going pretty well until I decided, you know what this needs? It needs some white. And then I just put a whole bunch of white down and covered up everything that I just did and did not love it at all. Yeah, kind of a big muddy mess. I did mix the white with a little bit of the matte medium trying to thin it out, but it's, it's just kind of a giant mess, but it's okay because I can fix it. And that's kind of something that you should always keep in mind, especially if you are working intuitively. You can always fix it. Absolute worst case scenario, it is paint and a board. You can just gesso over the whole thing and start over again. But you can see there that I'm like actually wiping paint away. And the reason why I can do that is because I use the matte medium and it actually creates a little bit of a water barrier. So it is almost like painting on plastic or glass at that point where before the paint completely dries, you can go in and do a little bit of cleanup work. I was being stubborn about the white though and I thought, well, I put some down and didn't like it. Maybe what it needs is more. And that, that was not the answer as you can see here. And uh, yeah, didn't really like that either. I, I liked parts of it. I liked the areas that I could see through it, I guess. So really what I didn't like was the white. It was what was under the white, but I kept going with it anyway, because I thought, well, let's see what happens and I'll show you what happens here. And it's okay because I fixed it.
I'm adding in some white lines because when in doubt, I always throw in some lines and that usually is helpful to the design. And I do actually like it here too. I think it does definitely help, although I'm just not loving the big fuzzy white areas that I have there. So they still need to go. Yeah, still adding lines trying to save this. In a few minutes though, I realized that all of the lines in the world aren't gonna save this piece and I just need to entirely change it up again. But again, that's the beauty of this kind of work. You can totally do that. And oftentimes, putting things like this down and then putting more paint over top of them will get some interesting textures and different variations and deviations in the the tone and the texture of the paint that you're putting down. So it all ends up working out in the end. One other thing that I wanted to do on this piece was go in with just a regular old, I think this is just a 4B drawing pencil and write some pretty much illegible words. In fact, I don't even think I was using real words, um, which is a trick that some artists do sometimes. It just gives the look of writing without actually having something there that someone can read, if that makes sense. So now I've decided that I wanna go in with some collage papers. And I pulled these prints off of my gel plate earlier thinking that I was gonna to wanna to do some black and white on there. And I really do like the contrast of the black and white because it's so stark against kind of the right now mess that I have going on in the black in the background. I can't decide exactly which papers that I want to use because I kind of like all of them and yet none of them at the same time. So you're going to just see me here kind of um, like problem solving and uh, brainstorming on the fly, which is how I do this a lot of the time. So there's a lot of moving around of pieces and cutting different pieces. And there were several different ways that I could have gone with this that would have worked out and I'm actually noticing that more now as I'm watching this to do the voiceover here. I actually did like a lot of the arrangements that I was coming up with, but you will see in the end that I came up with something 100% different. At this point, the warm colors needed to come out because I'm looking at this panel and I'm just thinking it's just really stark and not very pleasing to look at. It's just got a lot of cold, to it that I didn't like. So I got out my Burnt Sienna, which is one of my favorite colors. I love using it because of the warmth that it immediately adds. I also love that it's pretty translucent, so I can put it over top of, you know, whatever else I have going on there as like a glaze, and it kind of just immediately warms things up. You can see there, I went ahead and quickly dried the surface with a, a hair dryer just so I could add more layers and kind of um, get a little bit more of what I wanted to happen there. And I think there I'm going in with a little bit of Payne's Gray, which is another one of my favorite colors to use. It's nice, it darkens things up without bringing the saturation of a black, but it's really nice as a, it's another translucent, so you can kind of use it just to lay over top of other things. And what I'm doing here is just building up layers of color and layers of texture. So you can kind of see what's going on with everything underneath while still getting a little bit of color and texture on the top. Here I am pulling out those shapes again. I still can't decide what I want to do with them. And I really wish I would have just made a decision early on with those because I'm really liking a lot of the arrangements that I had there, especially that black and white stripe that I've got there. They just work really well together and I think I could have gotten a successful piece even just using those. But what I'm about to pull out worked really well too. Here come the cats. Okay, so I'm going to explain the cats. I made these stencils. Um, I just looked at a picture that I saw online and kind of just did a sketch of my own on a piece of chipboard. I think that was actually the back of an old sketch pad or something like that. And then I made the other one out of a, another sheet of cardboard. And I th saw them lying on my table and I thought, well, you know what? Maybe it needs some cats. So I decided to use some of the black and white collage papers that I made in that way instead of just strictly 
design, which is what I was going to do. When I set out to do this initially, I thought I was going to just do a basic, pure abstract piece. But as it turns out, we're going to do some abstract cats. And I actually really am happy with the way this turned out. I think that the patterns that I chose work really well with the background. And it you'll see in a second, I think it just all comes together really nicely. Again, with that X-Acto knife, very important to change your blade. You will fight it much less. And I thought that in halfway through this, and I thought I should just really go and do that now. And then I was also like, ah, just finish it. You can change it next time. Don't do that. Change the blade. So now that I have the one cat down, I'm starting to think about things like balance and placement and composition. And since that was such a light color, I wanted to go in with a more solid dark color. And this was just some Mars black that I pulled off of the plate, just a plain sheet of Mars black. I like to use solid sheets that I pull off of the gel plate just to have around as solid colored collage papers and they come in handy for things like this because sometimes when you have a lot going on you need the contrast of a quiet chunk of space. In this case it's going to be one of the cats but it really does kind of bring a little more balance to the piece and you'll see in a second when I put it on there juxtaposed with the striped cat. At this point, I'm still not entirely sure what I want to do, so I just keep trying different things because that's the best way to figure out what you want. I mean, none of these are glued down. You can place the papers as many times as you want to get the composition that you feel is right for the piece. And that's what I did here. Gluing these cats down was a little tricky because of the tail and the legs being so thin, they kept wanting to jump up and stick to the glue on the brush. But once I got them down, I think it ended up working very nicely together. I absolutely had to have some of that black and white stripe in here somewhere, so I decided to give the cat a perch and that's what I put down there as a little perch for him that black and white paper and to kind of make it make a little more sense I went ahead and did it with the top cat as well but it still didn't look balanced enough it needed something in that bottom left hand quadrant so I went ahead and put a few more pieces of differently textured paper down there I'm still going through the process here, trying to figure out exactly what I want, trying different colors and different shapes, trying to see what is going to be the most visually appealing. That was way too many stripes going all in one direction. I really like the striped paper, but with the stripes on the cat plus the stripes on the perches, it just seemed like a little bit too much. So I found this polka dotted paper that I had made and that seemed to be a really nice compromise. It still had the black and white in there, but it wasn't so much of a saturated striped pattern. And I'm just putting the finishing touches on it here. I wanted to bring some of that other pattern over into the other side to make it make a little bit more visual sense. I know I say that a lot, but it's important to have some kind of cohesive balance to your piece, whether it is in color or texture or shape. And I think I achieved that pretty well, putting those last two little pieces down there. Then the last thing that I did was try to find something to put in the top right hand corner because that then felt out of balance to me. So I used some of that same paper to just put a sphere up there and I think it completed the piece nicely. But it still wasn't entirely right and I think what was bugging me was the fact that that striped cat was 
on tissue paper and so it kind of melted into the background a little too much so I just went in with a small uh, fine paintbrush and some titanium white and just brightened up the stripes on the cat which made it stand out a little bit better against the background there and then after that I just went in with my paint pen my uh, my Posca pen my acrylic paint pen and I cleaned up some of those stripes again so could I have just painted him on there? Yes, because I essentially did anyway. But it was still a stencil made out of a gel print and basically I'm just touching it up. But that's neither here nor there. I really like the way it turned out. I think it's a pretty successful piece and this kind of gives you a glimpse into the mind of an intuitive painter and the process and how many times one single piece can change before it's finally done. Don't be afraid to experiment with your work because like I said before, the worst case scenario is you just paint over it, but chances are you're gonna end up finding something that you like that you would have never even thought of. Just pick randomly, pick a mark making tool randomly, pick a paper randomly and just cut it out and try to lay it down and see how it looks and maybe you'll love it and maybe you won't. But I think every time you do that, you might learn something else about yourself as an artist and that's always a good thing. All right, here it is, all finished up. I'm really happy with the way this piece turned out. I think it's properly balanced. I like the colors. I like the feel to it. And thank you all for coming on this journey with me as I struggled <laughs> to make it. But that's what art is sometimes. It can be a little bit of a struggle. But like I said before, you learn something about yourself each time. So it's important to just keep trying and doing different things and pushing yourself because that's how you grow as an artist. All right, guys, thank you to everybody that's subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it so much. It helps me out more than you could imagine. Um, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please do. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you have any comments or questions, I am happy to answer anything that you might want to know. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.